Okay. All right. So, good evening, everybody. Hi. Good My name is Otejo Aranbude. I'm an associate member of the Lifestyle Champions International. Okay. A non governmental organization um, set up, officially launched this year, September 13th. Um, chaired by Dr. Ori Makinde. And um, so I'm one of the associate members and um, we stand. the program we're on today is Boost Your Confidence, which is a forum where we all get together to encourage each other with practical, you know, stories and sharing of our own lifestyle journey experiences. Okay. And the other things that Lifestyle Champions International does, this is one of the major ones I'm going to be um, concentrating on today. So for today, who is sharing their lifestyle experience with, with us? I'm going to be introducing her shortly. She's a colleague. And um, her name is Bola Fatusi. She's a doctor, a family physician. And she works at the Federal Medical Center, Gusau, in the northern part of Nigeria. She's a member of the Society of Lifestyle Medicine of Nigeria. She's an astute advocate of lifestyle medicine. I can testify to that. She believes in the innate ability. I'm, this, I'm quoting Dr. Bola Verberton. She believes in the innate ability of the body to heal itself when supplied with what it needs. That is one of the major um, principles of lifestyle medicine, enabling and helping our bodies to heal themselves. So we reduce the things that we put in. So Dr. Bola is going to be talking to us today about her lifestyle journey, what she's experienced and um, how she's been able to come to a point where she knows that she has achieved you know a lot of steps and um she's been able to achieve goals that she set for herself on the lifestyle journey in being able to become a person that she's more pleased with than before so i'm very happy to introduce dr bola fatise and bring her here to the forum dr bola over to you Oh, thank you, uh, Aramide. Good to see your fa your face here. Yes, um, indeed, and I'm really uh, happy. I, I sorry, I need to mention that <laughs> Dr. Bola is a very, very um, wonderful person to work with. So I must tell you that I'm so excited to be the one introducing her today. The last yeah. time we were together, you know, she really made my work a lot easier. So this is something that I want to really hear what she has to say. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, uh, Aramide, for that uh, introduction. I'm really glad that um, I'm given this opportunity to share uh, my story. Uh, so, Dr. Ore, I'm grateful for the opportunity. So, I welcome everyone. So, um, I will start by saying that the story I'm about to share is not uh, like I'm a superhero or something. But I want us to know that we all have what it takes to change. We all have what it takes to make a decision to change. What, what, whatever that uh, change might be, we can do it. All we need is just a little push. And that is what this um, um, BYC aims to achieve just to give us that push we need to take the first step and uh, move on and you know what uh lifestyle uh changes it's uh, when, when when you start it and you see the results is enough motivation to propel you further when you see the results you are achieving so you, you just want to move on. You just want to do it. It becomes like, uh, I don't want to use the word addicted. You, 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 you are able to persist and continue to, you know, to, 
to do what uh, you are opposed to do. So uh, this evening, I'll share a little background uh, of myself and how my lifetime problem came to be and uh, how I was able to overcome it, what I did. And uh, I will not stop there. I will still highlight few challenges I'm still facing and uh, what I'm doing to, you know, to overcome those uh, challenges. So I, I will start by saying that all my life I've been like a very slim person. People who know me <laughs> can attest to that. In fact, I never imagined that would I come a stage in my life when I would, I would have to vigorously consider losing weight. Because I've always been like this lean girl, this, you know, that has been me. And I remember during my undergrad days, I said, imagine, 47 or 48, and my BMI then was just like, just 20, uh, like 20 kilogram per meter squared. That, that was, so then I was so carefree. I eat what I like. I don't exercise because I, I don't believe that is for me. I, 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 I believe, okay, people who are obese, overweight, who have uh, some medical conditions, that is really for them. So I'm so free. But that was an erroneous belief. And um, this is my um, usual stature and everything. Everything changed about two years ago. You know, about two years ago, uh, the weight gain wasn't really something I uh, intended. It was more of an iatrogenic um, uh, thing. Uh, by that, I mean that it was a result of a treatment or maybe of, of, of a medication I was on. I'm still on the medication now. So I just noticed that I started gaining weight. Like initially I was loving it. Like, oh, this is the new me. You know, for someone who has never been uh, on the plump side, now you notice that's okay. Uh, okay, I just feel like okay, this is this is good. So I was just like that until my weight, you know, progressively increased to like uh, sixty-four uh, kilogram. It's increased to like sixty-four kilogram. That was for my height. That has increase my BMI to like 27 kilograms per meter square. So I was officially overweight. But I don't really give a damn. I, I felt, yeah, this is just the new me. I changed my wardrobe, uh, dash away my old clothes, uh, adjust the, one, uh, the, the ones I could, until it became very embarrassing. When people... Uh, saw me, they keep asking, are you pregnant? Are you, <laughs> you know, because the weight gain was more like this abdominal obesity. It was more around my tummy. So it was like, uh, are you pregnant or what? So I just have to keep telling them, no, I'm not pregnant. I'm not pregnant. So even that did not really get me started uh, on maybe losing weight until something happened. And what was that? I did a random check of my blood sugar. I just, of my fasting blood sugar. So I was like, okay, it will still be okay. Because like three or four years back, it was like, uh, uh, like four millimole per liter. So I was expecting something around that value. I got a very rude shock. <laughs> so I checked and lo and behold, the result was 
5.6 millimole per liter. Wow. You would say uh, it's still within normal limit. Uh, that that doesn't really uh, that's that's no cause for alarm. Uh, but then I know that if my FBS can change progressively from four to five point six now, like something else is knocking at the door. So I know trouble is actually brewing, and I don't really need a prophet or is is here to tell me. To start, <laughs> to start taking uh, some drastic uh, measures to curtail that weight gain. So what, what, what I did, so I reviewed myself, my lifestyle. I looked at myself, what are those excuses of, I have uh, against um, exercising and some other stuff. And, I could say I'm a quite busy person, you know, being a career woman, a mother of two with no house help. It's quite a tough job for me. So I, I, I don't really have time like that to exercise. So I was like, how am I going to do this? How am I going to, uh, you know, re uh, reduce this weight and at least get close to what I used to be. So what I did, uh, initially I started reducing my calories. And now I did that. I adopted what I called uh, half and half. I called it half and half. So ev at every meal, half of my plate will be vegetables and half would be whatsoever I desire to eat. I did not restrict myself or maybe follow keto diet or whatever. I did not do that. So what, what I did was just following that half and half rule initially. So I have vegetable. In the north air, we have uh, it plenty in abund abundance. You can go to the market and get lettuce, cabbage, as you know, very uh, cheap, uh, very cheap price. So I adopted that and I did that for a few months until my body actually gets used to it. That anytime I want to eat anything without vegetable, I'm not taking that food. So that became like a rule for me. So I, when, after I've done that for a while, yes, I knew I had to had exercise. So how I summon that challenge, so I downloaded this application, this pedometer ap application from Google Play. So anytime I'm going out, maybe going to, when I, maybe on break, I hold my phone and I move around, I walk around. So whatever step uh, I uh, took, this application usually record. So I get used to that, but that wasn't enough. So I just looked at myself one day that even this sitting room, this, uh, my, I looked at my sitting room and I felt this sitting room and corridor moving, going, to and fro, I can actually achieve something. So I started just like a joke. I'll be walking at times, I'll be listening to music while walking. Um, just my sitting room, round my sitting room and corridor. At times I'll be doing what some people call prayer walk. So something to just keep my mind uh, focused so that I will not really feel bored about uh, walking. So I I, I just see myself progressing um, gradually. I was able to take 4,000 steps, gradually 6,000 steps. Though yet to achieve the 10,000 uh, steps, but I've been able to achieve so far uh, 8,000 steps. Uh, my average daily has been above 2,000. So I've, I've been able to sustain that. So now, 
the dietary uh, part 